So a swivel knife, a bevel, and a maul are the backbone of your tooling kit. But there's another tool that we can use that'll up your game several notches if you know how and when to use it. So today we're gonna talk about four different ways you can use a modeling spoon to up your game. That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name's Daniel Reese. This is Weaver Leather Supply. When we're learning to tool leather in the very beginning, we all start out with the same skill set, and we all start out typically with the same kit. A basic swivel knife, a traditional bevel, and a maul or a mallet of some sort. Those are skills you have to master if you want to be successful in this craft. But there's another tool that can add different effects, it can add depth to your projects, and in some situations it can even erase mistakes and it's as easy to use as a pencil. Now you've already seen the thumbnail, you've seen the title, so you know what I'm talking about, it's a modeling spoon. So let's jump in to the first way you're gonna use a modeling spoon to up your game. So first up is using the modeling spoon to create hair texture. Now, we just did an entire video on how to do this, so we're not gonna cover this in very great detail, but I did wanna add it in because it's one of my favorite ways to add and create texture in hair is the modeling spoon. So if you missed that video, we'll put a link in the description below. But essentially what we're doing is we're creating shadows by using the modeling spoon. The leading edge of the modeling spoon creates crisp, lines, whereas the curved side of it creates shadows that fade out. And that's the key. We're using the modeling spoon to create shadows. Now, like I said, we just did a video on this, so if you missed it, we will put that link in the description below. It's 20 minutes jam-packed with useful techniques and tips and tricks that'll really add a lot more texture and depth to the hair in your projects, whether it's human hair, beards, or even like horse hair. Next up is adding burnish to your projects. Getting that beautiful, smooth burnish can be a real challenge, especially if you're new. By using the modeling spoon, that allows us to control the speed and the depth at which we lay down that burnish. The trick is making sure that you're using long, smooth strokes that glide over the leather. Just so we're on the same page, I'm not giving you an excuse to skip learning how to use a pear shader. That's a crucial skill. But a modeling spoon can really feather out that burnish in ways that other tools really struggle to do, especially if the user is new. Do me a favor, if you're enjoying the video, if it's helpful, click that like button. Tells me, tells YouTube, tells Weaver that we're on the right track. The third way that you can use a modeling spoon would be to round off the edges of things that shouldn't have a crisp edge. The most common way you might use this would be in floral work, vines and acorns and that kind of thing. Really, you want to round the edges off. And this is going to be a detail that probably the person won't be able to point out, but their eye will notice. If you were to take two projects, lay them side by side, one has the edges rounded off in the areas that it should be rounded off, and the other one doesn't you're definitely going to notice a difference. So here's a piece that I'm currently working on. It's a practice run, so it's not perfect. It's not complete. I like to do practice runs on some of the more complicated pieces that I do. It allows me to, you know, work out the bugs. Um, but as we look at it here, you can see that on her back, so that the, the ridge of her back, her arms, the edges of her legs, all of that has been rounded off and it gives it a lot more of a natural look. And last, we can use a modeling spoon to erase some of those mistakes in our work. Choppy and inconsistent beveling is something that pretty much everybody struggles with when they're learning. Now this trick's not gonna work if the mistakes are too deep or too heavy, but for the more subtle ones, it's fantastic. What you're gonna do is you're gonna use it exactly the same way that you would use a knife to spread butter on toast. You're gonna put your spoon down on a slight angle and gently pull it along the area that you want to, to clean up. Just be careful not to drift into other areas. You could start creating new mistakes and cause all kinds of problems. Just go slow and it'll be fine. Well, that's going to do it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. And in the meantime, go make something amazing.